exactly well I know the reason that the officers are making doing anything that they want to do out there not not abiding by the Constitution the laws violating everything is because they know that we don't know if we learn what these are and you can say to the officer well your reasonable suspicion was stopped for stopping me was I didn't use my turn signal. I, I submit to that officer. I did not use my, my turn signal, but I'm not authorizing you to search my vehicle. Now, Terry versus Ohio says that you can pat frisk me. Yeah, you can. Go ahead, pat me down. I don't have anything, but you cannot go in my pockets. And when he sees that you know these things, it stops a lot of that. It stops a lot of that. And if they continue to do it, then, of course, you have to use the, the, the judicial system as it is to try to fight it. But we have some, some things that they didn't have some time ago, and one of those things is the social media. Uh, we need to use them, Twitter, Facebook. Anytime, I would advise every, every, every one of you to get you a little tape recorder. Uh, to make sure you always got your cameras handy. If something occurs with you, hit play on that button. Because as long as you are part of the conversation, you can record it, and it's not against the law. You can record it. So turn it on. Turn it on. And if that officer is, is saying something, and it does, I mean, I've, I've heard just too many nightmares. And I myself, I must admit, some years back, I come home from work. I lived right over in Autumn Woods uh, some 20 years ago. Park my cruiser, get in my Cadillac, and drive, drive right down Anthony Street, and it wouldn't be 15, 20 minutes later until the sirens are behind me. Pull me over, and the first thing I do is throw that ID. Now, I want to know why you stopped me. I want to know why you stopped me right now. Give you something real quick. Oh, I thought it was a, a vehicle that was involved in something. Run back to the car, jump into the takeoff. I've had that happen a whole bunch of times. Hey, I know this. It happens. I know it. But we also know that there are a lot of our young men out there in our community that are doing the wrong things. And when you say that you are sick and tired of seeing uh, racist officers saturate our communities, well, how are you going to go downtown with any defense about it? Look, out, look how the, the young men are uh, out here conducting themselves. But that doesn't mean that an that a, 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 a upstanding citizen who's on his way to work, minding his own business, has to be subjected to the illegalities and the imp improprieties of these officers simply because they're on a uh, uh, a quest to, to stop the gang uh, violence and things of this nature and I applaud that but, but come on you have to abide by the United States Constitution and you have to abide by the standard operating procedures set forth in your manual from the city of uh, Fort Wayne Police Department and, and a lot of times not all of the officers because there's some good officers out there it's some of the bad ones and they know who they are that make the whole department look bad. They're acting on their own, not even, not even in congruity with their own department. They're doing a whole bunch of underhand garbage uh, themselves. So it's up to us as a community. We need a platform, and it's a, it's a good thing that Brother Hackley has these things going on like this, but we need a platform where this kind of thing can get spoken out. Because once it becomes public, then you can see, you'll see it's, it'll start to wane. It'll start to wane because nobody wants the bad press. Nobody, and if it gets bad enough, I think that was particularly with this, this young Haney boy, which is my cousin's uh, son, uh, Rose Haney, who, who they shot in the front, shot him in the back, shot him and killed him and everything, and then said it was justified. Right over here on Oliver Street, I believe it was. Just tragic. Just tragic. And we, now, and, and, and again, we're, we're everywhere all over the country bleeding for somebody else's cause. But when it comes to young men, our young men, been assassinated and murdered, we ain't got no blood to bleed. Everybody hiding. And then they claim that you stand up in church and claim you got faith. Now don't get me wrong. I am not uh, a, a one who, who bashes uh, church goers because I believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection myself. But I believe this. Faith without works is dead. It's dead as fried chicken. So if you want to, to claim that you have this kind of faith but you're afraid to stand up and speak on it, then how you gonna how you gonna say at the same time you wanna be like Jesus, you wanna live like Jesus, and you wanna do what Jesus did? Jesus went and told Caesar, You're not God. You know, the God that sent me is God. That's who's God. You know, Jesus went, we know what he did. Everyone wants to act like Jesus never got angry. But tell me what happened when he went in there in the synagogue and, and, and turned the money changers table over. You know, took a stick 
and, and turn it over and threw everything and told him to rebuild, the, uh, tear it down and, and he'll rebuild it in three days. Was he not angry? I think he was. Everyone wants to say that Jesus was always happy when you know that time he was angry. Jesus got angry about what they were doing in his father's house. So, if you have your faith, and they claim they do, and it's, and it's something they sit in church and say, well, I got faith, but then when it comes to time out here to, to, to stand out on it, you say that you're you, you anointed and you're protected by the blood. Well, Jesus spoke. He was assassinated too. And I guess that's why ain't nobody saying nothing. But, you know, he, he, he sent us a message. You know, the path to him is not a, a wide, wide one, but it's a very narrow one. So let me say this in closing. You know, I'm not a racist. I don't believe in any form of racism. Uh, I, don't, I believe in judging a person by the content of their character and uh, their uh, conscious behavior. And if you consciously behaving like you hate me, then, well, you know, uh, I'm going to have to fight fire with fire because I don't believe in trying to love nobody that don't love me. That's just not me. Uh, uh, my teacher, El Hodge Malik El Shabazz, used to say one thing. He said, if you're ever going to have a conversation with a man, you will have to learn his language. And when you learn his language, then you can talk. But if you don't know his language, there ain't no way y'all gonna be able to come to some kind of understanding. If he speaks French, you better learn French. If he speaks Greek, you better learn Greek. If he speaks peace, you better learn how to speak peace. And if he speaks violence, you better learn how to speak violence. But either way, you're gonna have a conversation. All right, thank you.